Well, my name is Kathy Gilbert, and I am on staff here at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa. I assist Brian and Cheryl Broderson in their ministries, and I have three claims to fame. One of them is I actually was at Woodstock. The second is I was tear gassed on the March on Washington in the fall of 1969. And the third is I am the oldest, longest, present Jesus freak at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa on staff. So with that, I wanted to take you to Maryland where I grew up. And um, back in the 60s, I grew, it was in high school in Maryland. And um, the part of Maryland I was in was in a country town in between, right in between Baltimore and Washington, DC. and. I saw a Time Magazine article, it was in 1967, and it was a magazine article on the summer of love that happened in San Francisco. And when I saw those hippies, and I read about Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters, and heard about Thomas Wolfe's book, Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, went and got a copy and read it, I thought, oh my goodness, I know why I'm here and what I'm supposed to be, and it, I became a hippie. And so here I am as a hippie, thinking the hippies had the answer to the three like key things that are important to us as humans and the first is love unconditional love the second is communication that nonverbal communication that giving and taking and three purpose the gifts and abilities we've been given they have a, there's a meaning behind that and so i assumed that hippies had it and so here i am this hippie and graduated from high school in 1969 uh, and in Ask my precious mother, here I'm the oldest of six children, I asked my precious mother to take me to a commune in Fairfax, Virginia. She did, and from that commune, we did a drug run to San Francisco, so then I got to do the whole Haight-Ashbury love-in scene there in San Francisco, and thought, this is really cool, but it's still, I was left, left just empty. And so I returned to the East Coast, and I heard about this concert and they said, it's a concert in upstate New York. You don't need to buy tickets, you just show up. So I hitchhiked up there along with half a million other hippies. And we had this concert, this, this Woodstock concert. I was there for over a week. I didn't stay there in the main amphitheater. I stayed on the hog farm camp. And the reason I was so impressed with that is Ken Kesey's Merry Pranksters, they had brought their psychedelic buses. They had sent uh, set up a their own stage, the Grateful Dead came and jammed every night along with all these other musicians. We had our own overdose tent and our microbiotic kitchen tent and we had the outhouses. So it was, everything was happening at our place. And did I find the answers to those questions? I did not. And so I returned to the West Coast thinking, okay, it's gotta be back here in California. And I went from commune to commune and never found the answers to those questions. The hippies didn't have it. And I was, I knew, okay, the hippies don't have it. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll is not the answer. So I hitchhiked, I went, hitchhiked down to Big Sur. I hiked along Nacimiento Creek with my bag of roasted soybeans and my sweater, my I Ching, this book of divination, thinking maybe if I'll figure it out, that I'll get the answers from the I Ching. And I did not find that. My parents, this summer, because my birthday's in May, so May 1970, my parents sent me a backpack, General Delivery, Big Sur. And in that backpack, I put my roasted soybeans, my sweater, my I Ching, my sleeping bag, and I started hitchhiking north. And so I'm hitchhiking through Oregon, and this logger dropped me off at Willamette, in the, along the Willamette Highway on Rattlesnake Road. It's beautiful. It's the summer of 1970 in the Willamette Valley of Oregon, absolutely gorgeous. And I was hoping to get a ride, but I finally got a ride by two guys. They looked like hippies and they invited me to their ranch and it was getting late. And so I agreed, okay, one more commune, why not? So I went and this commune was different than any other commune I'd ever been at. There were 200 people there. So there were a lot of people there. It was beautiful. It was 80 acres of gorgeous Willamette Valley, Oregon land. And, but they were different. They had real joy. They had real peace. They had real love. And they just, just delighted in telling me why. And they said it was because of Jesus. And that Jesus is the answer to those questions. I thought, no way. I grew up in a conservative religious home. I heard the name of Jesus and there no way is he the answer to those three questions. So I went to the Oregon coast. 
I, it was getting dark, the, sun, the stars come out, and I take my sleeping bag, and I uh, hollow out an area in the sand, and I lay down, and I look up at the stars, and I started talking to Jesus. I knew that those people, those 200 people, Christians, I didn't realize they were Christians, I didn't even know the, even hardly the term, but they had something that I did not have and I wanted. And so I asked Jesus if it was him, and if it was him, did he want me? Look, I have nothing to offer you but myself. Do you want me? And he did. And not only that, but he answered the question. He loved me with his unconditional love. That nonverbal communication we all long for, I experienced that with Almighty God as I spoke to him and he spoke back to me. And not only that, but he gave me purpose. He has given all of us gifts and abilities, and he has a purpose in that. And so he showed me I have a purpose, I have a meaning. And so I returned to that 80-acre ranch, and they told me then that it was called Shiloh. And they said, this is a training center. We come from this church in Southern California called Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, and I am welcome to, to join them, and that's exactly what I did. And little did I know that there was man, one of those 200 people was a man named Stephen Gilbert. And if you were to ask him today what he thought of me, he would have said, oh wow, she was scary. And I have to agree, I was pretty scary when I was first hitchhiking around as a hippie, but God got his hand and got into my life and changed me. And so we were married in 1972, we moved back to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa in 1973. Pastor Chuck Smith invited my husband to take over the print shop. I worked on the switchboard and I've been on staff ever since. They have not been able to get rid of me. And I think, and I'm thanking God that I got to experience that revival in the 60s. And, but what I'm really excited about today is the revival that's happening with this generation. And I've been in ministry now for 50 years, and I have four things I would love to pass on to this next generation. The first is a word called chill, and that just means relax, let Jesus take over. The second word is immerse yourself, so just, just immerse. And so that means just immerse yourself in Jesus, immerse yourself in his word, and watch the transformation that'll happen. The third word is grace. Have grace for yourself, but have grace for others. And the final word is be yourself. I could tell you there's nothing more lovely, more attractive, more beautiful than Jesus shining through you. May God richly bless you.